If you struggle to keep your house tidy or you're struggling with a messy home or it's hard to let go, it could be because you're lying to yourself. In today's video, I'm going to break down the 10 most common decluttering lies. I work with a lot of clients, thousands of clients over the years, so I've heard these same lies over and over again, and these are also the lies I used to tell myself. The first lie that I hear the most often is decluttering is wasteful. And it isn't that like it throwing good things in the trash doesn't feel wasteful. That's not the lie. The lie is thinking that holding on to things that you're never going to use is somehow either saving you money or saving it from a landfill. Eventually, if it's trash, it's going to end up in a landfill. Your house is not an alternative. And but this is still a lie we tell ourselves. And my client Kelly is a perfect example of this. I'm here with Kelly in her beautiful home and beautiful kitchen. We're going to make a big transformation behind closed doors today. But the first thing we have to do is take everything out and we're going to start with food. Kelly's kitchen was actually really tidy on the outside. You would never know she had a clutter problem, but inside the cabinets, just everywhere, was so crammed, filled with food that she could never find what she needed. And most of that food was long expired. You can eat expired food, but in Kelly's case, she wasn't going to eat it. It was, some of it was four or five years expired, but she thought it was wasteful to throw it out. And you also could not donate food that expired. So she's holding on to it because it felt wasteful, but what was really happening is now she's buying food and it's hidden amongst the expired food and she's wasting more money and more food and she's stuck in this vicious cycle of waste. This home has more food than any home I've ever organized before and it's all hidden so you would never know it. Why do you think you have so much food? I know we've just met and this is a personal question, but this is a lot of food. Yes. Um, I think because I w didn't know what I had, so I would buy duplicates of it, right? So I needed some peas, So, but I did have peas already in the back of the cupboard, but I would go buy more peas because I needed them at that moment, so. Kelly actually had an entire closet that she would come home from the grocery store and because she had no room, she would just throw the grocery bags filled into this closet. Forget about them, everything would expire and it would keep piling. Most of the things in this closet had expired at least four years ago. What is going on in here? <laughs> this is a huge closet. This is where you hide stuff. Yes. This is your Monica closet? <laughs> yes. Let's shove it in there. Yeah. And shut the door. Oh, there's company coming. <laughs> Let's shove it in there. Who can relate to this? When I work with clients who really struggle with this wastefulness, my whole goal is just to give them permission to be wasteful because you're only wasteful right now so that new stuff coming in doesn't get wasted because you can see it and it's organized. And this is how you stop the cycle for good. So in the end, I gave Kelly permission and she let go of 285 pounds of expired food so she could finally have the organized kitchen she dreamed of. I'm shocked yeah. how much came out because your kitchen is still full. Yeah. It really is. It's just not stuffed. And this is how you know you're going to be able to keep it neat and tidy, not lose things, not have expired food anymore, because you can see and access and put things away really easy. And you're going to have clutter-free countertops. Nice. That's my favorite part. I'm excited too. <laughs>
okay, this next lie, I said the last lie was the most common, but I think this one also, it's up there. They're tied. This lie is, I just need to get organized. I will go to a client's home, there will be stuff everywhere, every surface is covered, and they will say, I don't need to declutter, I just need to get organized. I need more bins or baskets or a better system. I need to somehow be more detailed or win the game of Tetris so everything will fit. And this is a huge lie. This is exactly what was going on with my client, Stacy, in her basement craft room. She had a lot of stuff and in her mind, she just needed a better organizing system. I am a teacher by training. That's where my love of crafts continues to expand. And my training is for preschoolers with special needs. And so, um, you know, we use play-based instruction. And to me, that means including crafts and making everything fun. and. I do that in my personal life. This is where I can come to get away. And so for me, I want it to be, well, pretty. It doesn't have to be pretty by other people's standards. So I'm sitting at this craft desk that my boyfriend helped make for me because I had a vision. And I think the problem was the vision was fabulous, but the size of the cubes weren't big enough. So a lot of things might stick out or they're not as efficient as I would have wanted and then there's cubes on the side. And so those were the ones that I moved stuff further away. The teacher in me is still, hold on to it. It might be useful. Or every time I'm like, oh, that looks like a, a cool craft. Let me try it. And then I go crazy and buy all the things. And then this is some more things that I have. So these are all like my pads of paper and different papers for like making cards or gifts. Cause I started off with scrapbooking. Right. And then that's how I moved into the cricket where I had a friend who was like, look at what you can use to scrapbook. So then I was like, oh my. Stacy is such a classic B. She's a bit of a perfectionist. She doesn't want to get rid of anything. She just wants everything perfectly organized in some magical way. But she doesn't have the time. She doesn't have the space. She doesn't have the money. And she doesn't have the motivation to make it happen. What she really needs is to get real and have less, have a manageable amount of stuff. I gave her a ton of homework, but that was super overwhelming for her. I did get your email that you were feeling a little overwhelmed. I gave you all the homework. It's okay. I just was kind of trying to zone all the things and I'm not, I, I'm probably blocking myself because I was like, more could be done. Stacy and I had an emergency call because she was feeling so overwhelmed in her space. Just showing me what she had done, what she had to work on, I could feel her frantic, panicked emotions. She was trying to do it all at the same time. She was trying to organize and zone and declutter and make things pretty and perfect. Having everything a mess was completely stressing her out and she was not focusing on one task. She was fluttering from spot to spot, accomplishing absolutely nothing. My job as Stacy's clutter coach is to teach her how to enjoy decluttering. And so I broke it down into really small little projects that she could do and see a win. So she could like build up her confidence, build her decluttering muscles and build that motivation. What has happened is you're in what we call the messy middle. It's where you started decluttering, you started zoning, you started purging. And so you've pulled things out and you've made piles and, you've, and now you're feeling overwhelmed because the space is more overwhelming than it was when you first started. Okay. And so I need you to get a win. Okay. We're not jumping to making it pretty and done. We have more steps to go, but I want you, I need you to have a win. And okay. so clearing off your desk finishing those projects for the teacher like that I want you to just like hyper focus on those things okay and then get rid of the recycling shred the paper and do like a tidy so if you're looking around you're like I know this has a home put it back in its home it's not about perfection we might move it again that okay. doesn't matter I just want you to like I can tell when a space feels messy your head starts spinning Yes. And so when everything's everywhere, you're so distracted. You're like, oh, 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 oh. And so if we could clear one space, it's just going to be like, oh. 
Anytime I work with clients who really just don't want to get rid of anything at all, what I need to do is show them that decluttering is fun, that it's positive, that it's like changing their lives in this amazing way. And you do that not by telling them, but by showing them, by allowing them to experience it through little tiny, tiny wins, little tiny projects like clearing off a desk or getting rid of a pile that builds that momentum. It builds that like that trust in themselves that it's okay to let go. And this is what happened in Stacy's case. Once she started seeing that this was actually a fun and positive experience, she was amazing. And she tackled her entire basement in no time at all. This looks amazing. I love the colors. Look at this. Stacy, are you freaking out? Yes. I am. And here's my declutter box. So I put all the stuff in there so that my desktop stays like this. It's mm -hmm. so organized. Oh my gosh. I am blown away by this transformation. It's very organized. It's really visual and it's perfect for Stacy. Okay. When we first started, you were struggling. You were, I feel like you weren't confident in your ability. I wasn't confident in my ability to declutter. You have to trust that the system does work. So you have to step away from your perspective and actually take that first step of, okay, this is uncomfortable, but if I do it, it's, I'm going to build a stronger muscle. Letting go gave you this. Like, yes. look at this space and you wouldn't have been able to get this if you had held on to everything. Yes. The lie, I might need this one day, is something I think we can all relate to. We keep things because we're not sure, maybe, just in case, what if we need these extra things? But I think the lie comes in when we justify keeping everything just in case. And this is exactly what was happening with Tyler and Connie. Connie reached out to me because their garage was full. All they wanted to do was park in it. They've never been able to do that because Tyler just couldn't let go. We have been married for 13 and a half years and uh, we have two girls. Uh, we live in California. I am a uh, software engineer. Connie is a stay at home mom. I think, it, yeah, it's gotten to the point for me where I've just, um, I've ignored it now. Like it's bothered me so much that this year there was too much other stuff going on that like I just, have my path that I walk and that's about it now. Garages are definitely one of the worst offenders of this lie because it's where we put things to die. Old screws, those random Allen keys, maybe you have, I don't know, some camping gear that you've never actually used, but maybe someday in the future, just in case you might become a camper. It all goes in the garage. So we have the area uh, that we come out and this is kind of the first thing that we see. Uh, we have a few built, um, kind of desk storage type space, workbenches type things here to where that's where I dump. I've had the desire to repair things. And so that kind of storage gets built up and I never get to it. I mean, it kind of starts going in this direction, which is just all my old electronics. And you can kind of see it just kind of keeps going and uh, kind of bike storage. Okay. Uh, we have a lawnmower. I'm not going to sugarcoat this. A garage <laughs> is a huge job. This is a huge job. And the biggest part of it is going to be the declutter. I don't want to be like, we're going to declutter the whole garage in one part. That is not realistic at all. And you guys are, are busy. And I don't want to burden you by starting a job that can't be finished. So we're going to break the declutter up into three parts. Okay. by just zoning the garage into three areas. I think a big part of keeping everything comes down to anxiety, not really trusting yourself and fear of making a mistake. And this is what was happening with Tyler. He was so afraid to get rid of anything in case he needed it, that he was keeping everything. And now he wasn't even using not only the garage, but the workshop. He loves using his workshop, but it was so full. He felt overwhelmed and he wasn't even going in here at all. The first day's homework was super simple. So we got that done and cleared out and it's it's so nice. <laughs> I feel like I can breathe in that area. Okay, so show me, turn it around, I wanna see. Uh, so we have kind of our electronic uh, e-waste 
pile over here. Those that is, is there. that going, Tyler? Yes, I'm going to be e-wasting all of that stuff. So that's a good chunk of what was over there. Uh, I am the so impressed. So then we have our boxes, which we were keeping for the giveaway. And then we have kind of some of the giveaway piles that have started to stack up back there. Uh, this is kind of where I've decided these are the things that obviously I'm going to keep. There's tools, there's electronics, there's random things in that pile, random boxes that need to be kind of micro sorted. But the temptation for me was to actually do that. Yeah. I had to really do pull it. back. I had to I'm really glad. pull back to not do it. Working with clients who are really lacking the confidence to decide if they need something or not is tough. It's all about slowly giving them that confidence, the self-esteem to make the decisions, to trust themselves. Like I haven't camped in 20 years. I'm probably never going to. I can let go of the tent. And this is what we were doing with Tyler. And every time I met with him, he was more confident, more proud of himself and just like getting rid of a ton of stuff that he thought he never could. But tell me, how has it been going? Uh, it's actually been going uh, fairly well. I got the, the monitor hooked up and nice. kind of started to organize. Uh, we got one of these um, little bins right here. And this now houses all of like little screws, little um, knickknacks, things that I would access. Uh, so I kind of went through and sorted all of those. I love it. Okay, does this make you so happy? It does, because now they're not in like these little jars everywhere. Um, and then the pegboard. <gasps> no! I was able to kind of go through and uh, we bought some more pegboard stuff. It's organized to me. Like now I know where everything is. I can see it. I can put it away. Like I know where it belongs. When I take it off, I know what, I know where it goes. This looks, so, I'm so impressed. Thank you. But having things organized is definitely like, oh yeah, I want to go out and do that now. It looks so good. Oh my heart. I'm, I'm so proud of you. This looks amazing. They went into this garage, Tyler and Connie, just wanting to be able to maybe someday park one car. And the final results are incredible. Before I even see it, how are you feeling about your garage? Oh. We want to show everybody. Tyler like leaves it open when we go on walks because he wants everybody to notice it. I'm like, the problem is they had to have known what it looked like before right, yeah. so they can come congratulate him for all of his hard work. They don't see the change. They don't see the difference, but uh, like we do, and we, we yeah. keep showing it off to family and stuff like that that come over. And, yeah. So it's, it's pretty exciting. This next lie I usually hear from bees and crickets more than anyone else, and that is, I'll do it later. And more importantly, not only are they procrastinating, but they're procrastinating because they're gonna do it perfect later, when they have the time or the money or the right supplies, when they can do it and make it good, because they don't wanna have to redo it or, or make a mistake, right? The problem is this perfect magical time never actually happens and you end up just living with mess for years and that's what was happening with my client Shauna. So we're in Shauna's craft room and you run multiple businesses out of here. Yes. Yeah and it's it's tiny and it's also your closet. Yeah. How do you feel in here walking into here? Overwhelmed. Like I don't want to be in here. And yet you're working in here. Yeah. Like I'm looking, I'm like, oh, she needs the paper and she needs the vinyl and she needs the t-shirts and you need like everything. You've done an excellent job at streamlining 
and I don't see access. You're such a typical bee. You're like, I'm going to do this. So I'm going to set it here and I'm going to get to it later. And then one pile turns into 50 piles. And then you're like, but I know exactly where that is and I can find it in a minute. So I don't want to move it because yeah. this is where it goes. What if instead of piling it on the floor till later, you just were like, well, at least it's in. Does that yeah. bug you? Yes. Okay. I feel like with, I won't know, you know what, it'll be there. And then when I need it, now I have to go back through this pile. Do you get what I'm saying? I am going through a pile now. But it's a pile on the floor. If it, if I have a spot for it, in my mind, I'm always like, this needs a spot. If I have a spot for it and it's organized by color, then no. This is so good. <laughs> I hope you are really hearing this, especially bees and crickets. This is exactly oh what everyone says. I want to do it perfect. I don't want to make a mistake. I don't want to redo things. I don't want to create extra work for myself. I don't want to be stressed out that I can't find something. So I'm going to get to it later. Yeah. And I'm going to do it right tomorrow or next week or the week after. And then so you're putting it in a pile and putting it in a pile and putting it in a pile and putting it in a pile. But like two months from now, that that pile was buried under a bunch of stuff. And I know like you know, but that's a mental load that you now have to carry of where everything is at all times. I feel like this lie is particularly hard and hurtful because the lie that we're gonna do it perfect or right or in this magical way later is such a lie because perfection is a lie, right? It, it isn't realistic that anyone can live on a daily basis and maintain that level of perfection. Your uh, expectation of yourself okay. isn't real. Oh. I'm a professional organizer. My house isn't like that. Guess what? The home edit, it's a lie. That That's not real. Okay. To be perfect all the time. And you're striving for something. And in the meantime, you're working so hard and still drowning. Yeah. So what we're going to do to dip your toe in the crappy water of just, I'm more important. My peace of mind is more important. When we are decluttering, we're not caring where it goes. Everything we're donating today is going to Goodwill and stop. Okay. And it's not going to feel right. And you're going to want to find an animal shelter for your blankets. And you're going to want to find a, a women's shelter for the clothes. And maybe a friend. Oh my God, my best friend would look so good in this. Maybe I'll just call her and see if she wants it. Yeah. It's all going to Goodwill. Okay. And it's going to be gone and you'll never have to think about it again. And it's something off your to-do list. And that's more important. Anytime I'm working with clients that have this mentality, here's what I do. I give them permission. I, I push them to be bad at things, to do it crappy, to not fold, to just toss things in a drawer or maybe like put the labels on crooked. We're dipping our toe in the crappy water here because it's liberating and it really shows my clients that the little stuff like this doesn't matter. What matters is getting it done. This is a big pile. I don't want to look at it. You're killing it. I'm going to do this. Here is what I want you to do. Um, not fold that till the next time I see you. Just for fun. I want you to just dip your toe in the doing something crappy water. I'm not suggesting that you're never going to fold again. I feel again. like doing something crappy is not cooking dinner for my kids. I mean, us going out to eat instead of cooking. <laughs> That's good too. Who cares? Do that too. But also, what if you didn't and you just laid in bed and watched a movie and enjoyed your evening? What if you just did that? Then the whole time I'm watching a movie, I'm going to be thinking about doing this stuff. What if we just practiced for a day? How about today? We're not going to fold those. Okay. Well, today, after I leave, you're just going to chill. Working with clients who have this perfectionist mentality are always my favorite because I feel like it's liberating when they see the power of letting go. The power of embracing good enough gets them the results they're craving the whole time, but they get to have it quickly. And they actually have the space that feels almost perfect without having to be a perfectionist. On the count of three. <gasps> One, two, three. Open your eyes. Shut up.
totally deserved. Like, <laughs> I'm a crybaby too. Oh, it's so cute. This next lie is definitely the one that I struggled with the most and I still struggle with today. And that is, I'm waiting till I feel motivated. So I'm like waiting for motivation to hit me, like that spark of lightning, and I'm actually gonna wanna do the thing. Except I only ever really get motivated at like 3 a.m when it's not appropriate or when I'm not even home. And it's waiting for this feeling of motivation that causes us to just do nothing at all, which is exactly the problem I had with Taylor and Lisa. I'm Lisa. I'm Taylor. I'm a mom and a wife and a grandma <laughs> and I work full time. Tell me about this space. It's a hot mess. <laughs> okay. Definitely. It needs to serve several functions <laughs> as a guest bedroom, but it also needs to serve as kind of a toy room for when the grandkids come and visit. And of course, this room does need to house her hobby, <laughs> which is baking and painting. We have a lot of stuff. <laughs> Here's the truth that I've discovered about motivation. You can't just wait for it to come to you. You have to make your own motivation. And it really comes from momentum. So just getting started, just doing one small little five minute thing makes you feel motivated. So you only have to get up. And with Taylor and Lisa, they've been waiting for motivation for years. And in the meantime, this spare room has just piled up. They don't have a spare bedroom. They don't have a place for Lisa's grandchild to play. And they don't have a spot for all of Taylor's craft supplies. So I got every, like all my baking stuff sorted out and in one area and same with my painting. Nice. Yeah. There's this, this, and then all of that. Once I gave Taylor and Lisa like a little bit of homework to do, it was crazy pants. Like just taking that small step, they're excited. You can feel the excitement. You can feel the motivation. And they like nailed this space in under a week. I painted the closet. And I made the shelves for it. Me. I did it, Cass. And now I'm gonna put all of that in there. Yeah. In the end, after years of waiting, they finally had the space that they wanted. They spent zero dollars here. All it was was like a little bit of elbow grease and a lot of momentum to keep them going. And I'm happy to say they actually decluttered the rest of their entire house after this too. We're it's done, yeah, girl. We're done. Are you yes. feeling excited? By the look yes. of your smiling faces. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. We are very pleased. Aww. Very pleased. I'm so glad. I want you to, before you open the door and surprise me, just, it, I mean, it definitely wasn't that messy when you first called me. Um, but there was a lot going on in this space. There was a lot of kid toys. There was a lot of baking stuff. There was art. There was things. It was hot mess, definitely. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, just show me. I'm ready. Okay. Here we go. <gasps> oh my gosh, it looks so beautiful. Thank you. Yep, oh it is all God. done. It's There's space every, to move around every. it. Wow, I love the artwork too. I love the baskets. Oh my gosh. You know what? I yeah, love all the, the bookcases. I didn't realize they look so beautiful. This lie I think is the most heartbreaking and that is I can't afford to replace this. So whether you've struggled financially in the past or you're still struggling now, it's really hard to see your stuff as something different than the money you spent on it or the money it would cost to replace it or the money if you could sell it for, right? And this is something that Karen really struggled with. Karen is all the way across the globe in Australia, so there's definitely a big time difference and I can't be there to help her. But she reached out to me and we're doing some online coaching to help her overcome extreme fear 
when it comes to decluttering. She has a beautiful daughter who's currently co-sleeping, but she wants to give her her own room. She had a beautiful bedroom, but it's just got used as storage. Things just got added to it um, when I got overwhelmed just with the daily loss of looking after her when she was little. I'm standing at the door and she's got a wardrobe, which of course is just stacked to the top with stuff so I can't even get into it. Karen lives in a two bedroom apartment with her daughter, but Karen also struggles with scarcity mindset. So she's very worried about providing for her daughter, having enough money. She went through financial hardships in the past. So now she holds on to absolutely everything. And the issue is her daughter doesn't have a place to sleep. Her daughter doesn't have a bedroom of her own. And Karen is stuck in this, like, I wanna give my daughter this, but I don't want to have to waste money. This is a really difficult thing for me as a coach to help her overcome. I can get to her drawers. You've done some things in here. I have. So this is all I kept out of the fabric. So I'm really proud of myself. Yeah, we got floor space. <laughs> oh, there's a real path here. This is excellent. Okay, so, so excellent. Anytime I work with clients who are dealing with scarcity mindset, who are really focused on the dollar amount, I just have to show them what their clutter is actually costing them. And in this case, Karen's paying rent every month for a two bedroom apartment and not able to use almost half of her home because it's filled with clutter. And so a really good exercise is just giving her a week, take photos of things and try to sell it online. What always happens is, we, we discover very quickly that our things aren't worth as much as we thought they were, and it's not always worth the hassle, and it kind of switches our mindset, and we start seeing things as like a burden instead of the dollar amount. And this is exactly what I did with Karen. She posted a lot of things, she started selling, and the more she dug into her pile, the more she realized a lot of this stuff she would never use again, she would never buy again, and she didn't need it at all. First of all, this looks 10,000 times different than I first saw. You couldn't even walk in here. So yeah. be really proud of yourself. Look at the floor. I'm going to start with these drawer organizers here. We talked about creating another drawer organizer for your craft supplies. But what are you planning for these two? I think they're red. Yeah. Um, I don't really have any sort of idea. I think I used to have like stationery in them. And, um, I don't know. I, I don't love them. I don't yeah. think they're really functional, especially for macro organizers. They're just random junk catchers. Yeah. And I think you should just let them go. So the toy on top that's still in a box, do you want to keep that? No, I don't think so. It was a birthday present that's a year past. So she's out. I mean, not for Ella, that was for someone else. Oh, okay. You were gone. Gone. <laughs> well, you can try to sell that. That that's over something like try to sell it. Again, seven days if it hasn't sold. We donate, but I love that. Let's take a picture. I'm gonna add that to your homework. Before I show you Karen's reveal, I mean, she did a lot of work. She donated over 90% of what was in this room. I want you to pay close attention to the smile on her face, to the lightness that she has. That you cannot put a dollar amount on. This is exciting. So how did the decluttering go? You were really struggling last time we talked, but you started getting into the flow of things. Yeah, um, well, it looks really good now. You want to have a look? <laughs> I do! So at the door, there's nothing there on the wall now in the cupboard. Little toy chest. So organized toys with their categories, and she seems to be able to keep them in the right spots. So that's really exciting. Books, dolls, her bed, and her chest, her drawers, oh. and that's it. Oh, and the couch, of course, that I'm sitting on. <laughs> I am flabbergasted. What? <laughs> this is amazing. It's beautiful. Wow. So is she sleeping in here? She is. 
So she's gone from, as you would have seen, she's lost the sight of the cot as well. So <laughs> that's been huge. Um, but just having her own room has been absolutely amazing and beyond my dreams of how nice I thought it would turn out. So it's been incredible. When I first met you, you couldn't even walk in here. <laughs> Like, do it was you a storage room? <laughs> it was a storage room, and it was so overflowing and so big and so overwhelming. And everywhere you looked, there was memories and there were special things. And you, I, I'm gonna be honest. I was like, this is gonna be hard, <laughs> and you did it. It was hard at times, but yeah, <laughs> um, it, it just amazes me every time I walk in here. Definitely a huge lie that I hear all the time is I don't have time to declutter. I'm not saying that decluttering isn't time consuming. It is. It, it takes time to go through your things and let go. But clutter is also costing you a ton of time. Decluttering is definitely an investment. And this is something that I had to show my client, Stephanie. My name is Stephanie. Um, I have two kids. My daughter is nine and my son is six. And my husband, of course, lives here as well. This is my brand new kitchen that we just recently renovated. So it's kind of like my dream kitchen. And I thought I would totally be able to be organized once I had a new kitchen, but I am not. <laughs> Stephanie loves to cook. She used to own a restaurant. She has every gadget. She can do all the things. So many gadgets, in fact, that she didn't actually have room for food. And every time she went to cook, it was a huge hassle to find the stuff that she needed. If we could edit every drawer and cabinet and just really pare down the things you know you use and love, yes. we can consolidate and give you actual food storage. Right. This is valuable real estate and it's filled yes. with, what is this? It's for martini actually. <laughs> so the Probably. most important drawer in the whole kitchen. And I'm just seeing like a lot of randomness. Yeah. Why, it looks like jellyfish. It's supposed to cover a jar. Do you use it? No. Okay. <laughs> Here's the most amazing thing. In the end, I helped Stephanie declutter her entire kitchen in under three hours. That's all it took, under three hours. We just went cabinet by cabinet, drawer by drawer. We even put everything back afterwards, under three hours. We always overestimate the amount of time that decluttering is going to take. And now every day she is saving a ton of time in this space. Can I say it? Say it, say it. Stephanie sages her house when ghosts follow her home. <laughs> you have the coolest life. <laughs> this is crazy. So this cabinet is actually one of the most important cabinets in the entire kitchen because this is where they store the food. The pantry on the other side is really for snacks, chips, extra drinks. So this is where they store their rice and their pasta, but it's so shoved. I mean, if you need pasta, it's kind of like, you're getting it and then shoving it back in, it's definitely not working. I also think that all of these spices can be moved to the drawer. So these dollar store drawer dividers fit perfect in this drawer. I'm so excited about that. And then I actually just made this riser. I'm gonna put a link down below to a video that Catherine showed how to make this for all of the spices. Because look how cute, you guys. This is just dollar store foam board cut so simple to make and you can organize all your spices right in your drawer this is awesome now that we've relocated the spices we actually can see and organize the food When I'm working with a client who is busy, who really are telling themselves the lie that they don't have time, my job is just to show them the power of five minutes. You can do a junk drawer in five minutes. You can do your spices in five minutes. You can declutter your fridge in five minutes. And when I show, when I prove to my clients how quickly they can declutter, they have no problem doing the rest of the house without me.
This next lie, it does break my heart too. This one is tough. And this lie is, I'm really bad at decluttering. I'm bad at letting go. A lot of people tell me that it's just too hard for them. Everything has meaning or it's sentimental or they just suck at decluttering. And this is the lie that Michelle was definitely telling herself. Uh, my name is Michelle, obviously. I'm um, 54 and I have a wonderful husband and 20 year old son who's in college. And um, I've basically, um, been chronically disorganized all my life. I'm miserable in my own home. I need to make it my happy place now. I mean, it sounds weird that my house isn't my happy place, but you know, every room I go in, it's it's just so stressful. I mean, not every room, but <laughs> this is the worst one. My dream is, is it for to be my crawfish, my craft room slash I love crawfish. that term. <laughs> These are blank greeting cards because I see one, you know, I get one when I see one and think, oh, that's great for Amy's birthday next year. So <laughs> if I, if I need one next year, I won't be able to find this exact one. I have miscellaneous photos to sort. I've got um, cards to go through that I've received for birthdays or Christmas. Michelle has filled her crawfish, her craft room slash office with everything everything. It has so many things in here, but she's continually telling herself she's not strong enough to let go. Her space makes her feel really bad about herself. She hates coming into a lot of rooms in her home, but the lie is that she can never let go of anything. And so it's becoming like this self-fulfilling prophecy. She's not trying to declutter because she's already told herself that she's really bad at it. I almost can feel like your anxiety. We haven't even started even talking about decluttering and you're already like, I don't want to get rid of anything. I'm really bad at letting go. But that's a lie you're telling yourself, right? Yeah. Because you haven't practiced it. Everybody's mm -hmm. bad at letting go in the beginning. It stresses everybody out. It's hard for everyone. And yeah. that doesn't mean that you have a problem with letting go. And I don't want you to tell yourself that because as soon as you tell yourself that, then you're going to be like, oh no, I, I have a problem letting go. And I'm a, a bit of a hoarder and I can't let go. That's, that's not at all true. It's hard okay. for everyone to let go in the beginning and it really takes practice. So we're going to start really small okay. to build up your confidence to like, it's like a muscle decluttering, right? Hmm. You have to flex it. You have to build it up because it is very scary. And every time we do something scary in the past, our anxiety is like, avoid that because that makes us feel bad. So yeah. you've been avoiding this because you're like, it's scary, I'm going to avoid it. Oh, I feel better, I didn't have to do that scary thing. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna show you that the scary thing isn't scary. It's like a roller coaster, <laughs> right? You're like, I'm terrified, I'm terrified. Oh, that was so much fun. Oh, it actually <laughs> felt really good. Yes. And then the more we do that, the more you're going to be like, oh, decluttering, like it's like an adrenaline. It feels good. Mm -hmm. right? And we're going to slowly get there. My job as her clutter coach is to push her, to push her. And we start with trash. I want to show her that putting things in a trash bag is not hard. In fact, it feels amazing materials for a planner that I tried to use, but I didn't sustain it so that I could donate. I mean, that's brand new. Um, you're already, wait a minute. You're already going straight to the donate. You, you're <laughs> better at this than oh, you think. Sorry. I thought I'd have to ease you into this. Oh, I was wrong. Okay. Let, let's, let's put that in a donate pile then. It's going to take time, but I, I want you to like find this fun. I want you to start like associating this with self-care and mm -hmm. sort of like, man, this, this, I can do this and I'm good at this because right now I feel like you have this feeling that you're bad at organizing and that you're mm. not good at managing stuff. Sure. You, you can't let go of things. It's hard for you. I think you're mm -hmm. telling yourself all of these things, which is making it true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I want you to start telling yourself the opposite and proving to yourself in little tiny ways. 
So we're going to give you a win. Okay. I am excited. I'm ready to roll. Every time I met with Michelle virtually, I could see her self-confidence was growing. Like she was proud of herself. She surprised herself every time she decluttered. It was like this one thing she'd always thought that she was really bad at, she wasn't in fact bad at it at all. Actually, she's actually pretty good at it. And that, it just lit a fire under her. Not only was she making amazing progress in her room, but she felt really good about herself too. This is hands down probably one of my favorite transformations. I loved working with Michelle. We cried a lot. We cried happy tears together as she overcame all of these demons and finally had a space that she is so proud of. I feel like I, I don't believe this is really the same room. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just, uh, it's amazing. It's a new, it's a totally new space. You hung um, other things too. And this is all, oh my gosh, this, <laughs> not only does it look good, everything is zoned, everything is organized. I'm really impressed. Well, I mean, I would have never thought to zone if it weren't for you. So, I mean, you're, you're as responsible for this change <laughs> as, as I am. But um, yeah, it's exciting. I just, I can come in here and it can be my new, um, instead of my dump and run, it's my dream and do <laughs> room. I'm too overwhelmed. This is a lie that I hear all the time. This is a lie I, I totally tell myself sometimes too, especially when you have a really big project or a super big mess. You can like instantly tell yourself, there is no way I could do this. I don't know where to start. And so you don't start at all. And this is what was happening with Amy and Matt. Hi, I'm Matt. This is my wife, Amy. Amy. <laughs> <laughs> this is our basement storage room and it is a mess. I am pretty embarrassed about this space. I feel like it's a big weight on my shoulders. Um, I feel like this space takes up a lot of my family time. I'm constantly trying to reorganize it without success. Because this is overwhelming. This is like my brain. <sighs> Amy and Matt's basement storage room was like full, full like full, full, like you could hardly walk in the space. And so she would open the door, they would both open the door and be instantly embarrassed, have no idea what to do or where to start and shut the door and leave. I had to show them that any project, how you start is just getting started. You take a step in, you pick up one thing, you deal with it. This is how you stop the overwhelm and actually get amazing things done. Why do you think, like, it's only been two hours and you've made huge progress. Why do you think you haven't done it before? It's the motivation. It's somebody here to help push us. Yeah, and we have tried it before. However, we didn't really have a system per se. We just put stuff on shelves. So then we just go right back to... And we go, wow, look how clean it looks. We can see the floor. And then it was like, I yeah, but where do I find it. everything? Because yeah. it was like stuffed in different random spots yeah. on the shelves and couldn't find it. So we just would tear things off, and now we're back to where we were again. Yeah. That's what I did too. Cycle. It's a cycle of shoving, pulling, yeah. shoving, yeah. pulling. Six hours later, six hours, this entire storage room that was like up to my eyeballs, couldn't walk on, totally decluttered. And Amy and Matt did 99% of the work themselves. They really did. So all this stress and overwhelm and procrastination on something that they could do in an afternoon. Check out this huge donate pile. So much stuff is leaving this home. Tell me you're shocked. <laughs> Are it you? It feels good. Yes. It's crazy. Awesome. This is amazing how much stuff we got out of that basement. It's, it's, it's amazing, but it's kind of sad too to think that like this whole time we just had this and we never even really paid attention to it. The whole yeah. time it was just such a heavy just thing on us and we just never, yeah, big weight and we never... Yeah, we never really had the oomph to do, do it. it together because this is this is overwhelming. <laughs> Just thinking about it and getting started was the hardest part. 
once we were getting into it, then it became so much easier. Just body doubling, it, throw body it doubling. Out, get it out, get it out, get it out, right? When you tell yourself that something is too big of a job, too overwhelming, that you'll never get it done, it becomes a self fulfilling prophecy because you never get started. What you need to do instead is stop looking at the mountain and look at your feet and just take one step. And that's exactly what I do when I work with clients who tell themselves this lie. I help them, I push them, I shove them to take that first step and they climb the rest of the mountain all by themselves. One, two, three, open your eyes and come on Oh my oh, God. Wow. I wasn't gonna include this next lie because I don't know, this makes me feel very uncomfortable, but the truth, I'm just gonna say it because it's the truth. A huge lie is I don't have a shopping problem. We can declutter all day, every day, but if we're not stopping things coming into our house at a huge rate, we're never gonna stop having a problem with clutter. This is exactly what was happening with my client, Kathy. Hi, my name's Kathy and I'm a stay-at-home mom and I have for children, it's just chaotic here all the time. <laughs> the challenge with my laundry room is it becomes my dumping zone because I don't have time to put things away, so it gets shoved into a basket, into the laundry room, and forgotten. Kathy had the most beautiful laundry room I've ever seen in my life. Bigger than my kitchen, kind of gorgeous, and stuffed to the brim with everything. Tons of, just, just, everything. It was definitely an excess problem, but she was in total denial. So I had to pull everything out so she could actually see what she had. Let's talk vases. Is it vases or vases? Either one. Either one. <laughs> you have a lot either yes. way. Yeah, so these are the ones you don't love as much. You have other beautiful ones and you have some really lovely ones up there. So let's be ruthless. Okay. So find some that can go. Gone. 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 Love, love that. Let's talk about two of these pots. Pots? Do you want to keep? Uh, just the big ones. Okay, so we can get rid of this We one. don't need to keep this one. It's a little hideous. <laughs> yeah, let's kind of go. Okay, awesome. And then, Ken, these are beautiful, though. Do you want to keep those in your laundry room, or is there another spot that you would want to keep those? Um, I'll probably put them... I can find a spot in the garage. Sometimes I really struggle to be totally brutally honest with my clients. I don't know them that well. They've hired me. And in Kathy's case, I didn't know how to tell her that the real problem was that she just spent way too much money on stuff she didn't need. She 100% had a shopping addiction, but I didn't say that to her. I did spend lots of time. I helped her declutter and I got to help her organize her space too. We're kicking the homeowner out and we're gonna surprise her at the end. So I'm exhausted and we're done. In one day, you guys, in one day, in just a few hours, we decluttered, we took everything out, we reorganized it, put everything back, and now it's time to bring in the homeowner. <gasps> Kathy, come see!
Did Kathy's laundry room look great? Absolutely. It looked fantastic. But this was a huge failure for me. As a professional organizer, I failed Kathy because I know three months from now, it's going to look exactly like it did before I came because I didn't get to the root of her issue, which is she is just buying way more than she needs and way more than she should. And it's going to just fill up her space again. I wanted to end with a quick bonus lie. This is a bonus lie that I told myself, and I know a lot of you tell yourselves too, and that is, a messy home doesn't really bother me, right? I used to say all the time, I'm just chaos. I'm meant to have a messy space. A clean house is for nerds, right? But at the end of the day, the real truth was I hated the fact that my house was messy all the time. It made me feel very bad about myself. I was late. I was... I couldn't find bills to pay. It was ruining my life. But this lie that it doesn't bother us stops us from really taking action. What we really need to do is declutter. Because if we let things go, we're gonna have a home that's easy to clean, that's easy to tidy, that stays nice and organized all the time. That's the real secret. And when we can let go of all the lies, all of these lies, we can get that house. We can have the house that we are craving. Let me know in the comments below which one of these lies you tell to yourself. And thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you guys so much for those of you who have stayed to the end. So as I say goodbye to this house and hello to a new house, I was talking with the new owners who were coming and I was talking about how incredible our neighbors are. That's the thing I think I'm gonna miss most about this house. We have amazing neighbors. But then I started thinking about how all of my neighbors have seen my bits. All of them. The new house, I have no neighbors. That's a silver lining. Remember when I was in the front yard and my, my boob had fallen out of my nightgown? Or when I ripped my pants while on the dock all the way up and I was going commando and I was in the paddle boat and it was full of like kayakers and stand-up paddle boarders and I was just hoo-ha to the wind, or when I went in my hot tub naked and my 85-year-old neighbors were waving at me through the window and then I had to stay in the hot tub till I was beyond cooked because I didn't want to get out and flash them all my saggy bits. When I really think about it, these neighbors are probably very happy to see me go. <laughs> Let's be honest, they're like, that lady needs to go. In fact, the neighbor across the street, his, um, like when you log into Wi-Fi, his isn't, ours is like arson home. His is, please, for the love of God, close your blinds. I know he's talking to me. I, I know, he's, I know. I stumble out for milk in the middle of the night, wearing nothing sometimes. Is that TMI? Yeah, but um, I need to be with no one around. That's, I'm glad I'm moving with zero neighbors. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Let me know in the comments below if your neighbors like you or not. Are you a good neighbor? I feel like I try to be a good neighbor, but I'm such a hot mess. I can't help but be kind of bad. I'll see you guys next time.